Hi, everybody. Um, let me just this a little bit. Okay. So I'm sure you can see me. Okay. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, today we are doing um, a class that is going to break down the basics of a vinyasa yoga class. Um, so this is a really, really good opportunity for um, people who are not familiar with yoga or if they are, maybe they want to hone in on their technique or their form a little bit. So we're going to be breaking down um, the found, like the foundational elements of a, of a yoga class. So um, we'll be working on how to do the sun salutations, on how to do um, the chaturanga, downward dog flow, um, all of that stuff. So um, um, you're going to need, props-wise, probably get two pillows, a blanket. Um, if you have yoga blocks, those are always great. If you don't have yoga blocks, I highly recommend getting some. They are on Yoga Outlet for very cheap. Uh, yogaoutlet.com. I think they're like $10 a block. So again, super cheap and they're really, really great um, tools. If you don't have yoga blocks and you want to use something very similar to it, a foam roller works, um, maybe books. Some people have used Clorox white containers like the tall skinny ones. Um, but you're going to want every single prop that you can think of. Um, and we will get started um, in a seated cross-legged position. So find a comfortable seat on your mat, um, in the center of your mat. Um, you may need to sit on something, maybe a blanket or a pillow, maybe a few pillows, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna set up two blocks underneath my sit bones. And then I'm gonna stack a blanket on top of it. And this will essentially allow me to sit in a cross-legged position where my hips are either in line or over my knees. Um, when we sit on the, and then this also allows us to sit up with a straight back and a, an, an elongate our spine. Um, when we sit in a cross-legged position, a lot of our, a lot of us, for a lot of us, our hips are really tight, so our knees are sort of coming up like this. And it's uncomfortable and we're sort of slouching over. So placing um, uh, pillows or blankets underneath your sit bones is a really nice way to be able to sit in this in a comfortable way. Um, and it doesn't mean that you're, you know, a bad yogi. It just means that your, your anatomical structure is a little bit different than somebody who has extremely wide open hips. So we're gonna get started with our hands resting on tops of our thighs with our palms facing down, maybe on our knees. And like somebody has a, uh, a string attached to the crown of your head right here and pulling your um, head upwards, see if you can sit up a little bit taller so that your shoulders are relaxed down the back of your body, more space between the shoulders and the ears, and your spine is nice and long and straight. And then go ahead and close your eyes. The first part of a vinyasa yoga practice, and really any yoga practice, is a time where we ground ourselves, we find a little bit of centering, and we start to tune into the breath and start to deepen the breath. Vinyasa literally means breath to movement. So breath to movement. So Whenever we are moving in a posture, we have to be breathing into it. So breath is a huge part of all forms of yoga, but especially vinyasa, because without it, then we would just be stressing our bodies out and not relaxing into any of the poses and not getting the full benefits. So with our eyes closed, let's start to deepen the breath. We're gonna go ahead and count up to five as we inhale and down from five as we exhale. So let's take a big cleansing breath in through the nose and a big cleansing breath out of the mouth. 
So I'm going to count up from five, and I want you to hold your inhale breath at the top of five. So inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Hold here. And then we're going to exhale slowly, counting down from five, four, three, two, one. Hold here for a moment. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Hold here. And exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Hold. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. And exhale, five, four, three, two, one. We're going to count up to seven now. So we're going to hold it and stretch it out a little bit longer. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And exhale, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, and hold. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold at the top. And exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Move through three more rounds of this on your own, counting in your head. Last round. And at your end of your last exhale, go ahead and return to your natural breath and slowly blink the eyes open. Let's take a big inhale breath through the nose and a big cleansing breath out of your mouth. On your inhale breath, you're going to start to take your um, hands to your knees and pull your chest forward through your shoulders. Arch the low back and take your chin up towards the ceiling. And then on your exhale breath, we're going to round our belly or around our the back of our body, pull our belly towards our spine, pull our shoulder blades apart, and take your chin into your chest. We're moving through the seated cat cows. On your inhale breath, you're going to arch the low back, pull the chest through the shoulders, and look up, broadening the collarbones. And then as you exhale, we're rounding at the back and curling inwards. Go ahead and move through two or three more of these with your own breath. Inhaling as you pull forward, and then exhaling as you curl inward. We're warming up the spine. This is um, usually part of the very first poses is usually spine warm, like spinal mobility exercises. And just move through one more of these with your own breath. Exhaling as you round and curl. And then go ahead and return to a neutral position. Take your left arm up towards the ceiling. Start to turn your shoulders to face the right side of your mat. And then you're gonna take your right arm and place it at your low back behind you, crossing the left arm over and grabbing the outer edge of your right knee. So we're moving into a supine twist. I'm sorry, it's not supine. We are upright right now. (laughs) A seated twist. So see if you can use the hand on your knee to pull your shoulders and broaden your collarbones. 
and press into the floor with your right hand to sit yourself up even taller. So we have that string attached to the crown of our head, pulling us upright so that we can sit as long and tall as possible. Take a big inhale, cleansing breath through the nose, and a big cleansing breath out of your mouth. Let's do that one more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. As you inhale, slowly start to return to center. Hands rest back onto the knees. Take an inhale breath at center. And then exhale breath out. Inhale, reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. Start to turn your right shoulder to face the left side of the mat. We're going to take our left arm behind us. The fingertips are rested onto the floor at our low back, at our sacrum, at our tailbone. Reach up with your right arm even higher. See if you can turn your shoulders to face the left side, broaden at the collarbones while keeping your hips square to the front of the room. Take one more deep breath here, and then as you exhale, we're going to take uh, the right hand on the outside of the left knee. And we're sitting up as tall as we possibly can, reaching to, towards the ceiling from the crown of our head, sitting up long and tall. Take deep breaths in through the nose and deep breaths out the mouth. Sigh it out. Inhale through the nose and exhale out. Inhale, slowly start to return to center. Shoulders face forward. And we're just going to make our way onto tabletop position. So off of the props, you can scoot those out of the way. And we're coming onto um, hands and knees to start. And just move through one more cat cow pose on hands and knees. So dropping the low belly, arching the tailbone up towards the ceiling, looking up with your chin, up towards the ceiling, broadening at the collarbones, and then exhaling and rounding and curling. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the chin, lift the chest, and then exhale, round and curl. Go ahead and return to a neutral spine. This time we're gonna take our right leg and stretch it behind us, and just start to rock back and forth, flexing at the toe, warming up the feet. Making sure that our hips are square and flat to the mat, parallel to the mat. We're just warming up and stretching our toes, stretching our feet. And then take your, um, your right leg and cross it behind your left knee. So we should be in this sort of twisted, turned position where um, our shoulders are at first face the side, they're facing the front of the mat. And now we're gonna start to turn our head and our shoulders, our left shoulder specifically towards our right extended leg. So we're opening up the right side body. You should feel a nice deep opening in the right um, obliques. Take an inhale breath through the nose and an exhale out. One more breath, inhale through the nose. And then exhale, return that right leg to meet the left in tabletop position. Take one cat cow, lower the belly, inhale, broaden up the collarbones, lift the shoulders, lift the chest and then exhale, round and curl. Come back to a neutral spine, extend that left leg straight behind you and start to just roll back and forth on those toes, stretching out the calf gently, the toes, the feet. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling out. And then we're gonna cross the right or left leg behind the right knee and start to turn your body, turn your shoulders and your, your head to face that extended left leg. So you're looking over your right shoulder at your right left heel, excuse me. Opening up the left side obliques, inhaling through the nose and exhaling out. One more breath through the nose. And then exhaling, return to center, take that left knee next to the right. Take your knees out wide and keep your toes touching together. Start to sit back on your heels. Walk your hands out towards the front of your mat all the way down so that you can rest your chest and your forehead towards the mat. So if your forehead does not, um, if, you, if you cannot reach your forehead down to the mat, place a pillow underneath your forehead. 
just as long as there's something resting and something has contact with the floor in your upper body. Feeling the compression in the hip flexors, feeling the opening in the spine and the low back. Take a deep inhale breath through your nose and out the nose. One more deep inhale breath through the nose. And then exhale, we're coming back in the tabletop position. Tuck your back toes under, press uh, or take your fingers uh, and spread them as wide as you can with your palms directly under your shoulders. Pull your belly towards your spine, squeeze your glutes together, squeeze your ribs together, and then press into the toes so that you lift your knees a couple inches off of the mat. And take, pull your belly as much as you possibly can towards your spine. And we're holding here for five breaths. Inhaling through the nose. And exhale out. Continuing to breathe here. Press into the knuckle mounds of your hands. Out of the, uh, pressing the palms as much as possible into the floor. Puffing up the upper back. Take one more deep breath here. And then as you exhale, lower the knees. Untuck the toes and just press the tops of the feet, top and then the mat. Walk your hands out um, towards the front of your mat, a couple inches forward. And then we're going to tuck our back toes under. And same thing, we're going to lift the knees, but this time we're going to try to straighten the legs any amount. Lift your hips up towards the ceiling. This is downward facing dog. Check in with your hands. Make sure that your hands are shoulder width distance apart. Your fingers are spread as wide as possible. You have a soft bend into the knees. Your biceps are spinning up towards the ceiling and your triceps are spinning down towards the mat. Sink your chest back towards your thighs without splaying your ribs out, without letting your, um, you know, this curve happen in the, in the low or in the lumbar spine. So you want to pull everything up and tight. And press out of the hands as much as possible to get lighter in the wrists. See if you can take the shoulders away from the ears and sink the heels down towards the mat. So the more you press out of the hands, and this does require a significant amount of shoulder um, mobility here, so we'll work on that as well. Uh, but downward dog, at some point, it will become a resting pose for you guys. <laughs> Take one more deep breath in through the nose. And then as you exhale, walk your feet towards the front of your mat. Take your feet about hips width distance apart. And hips width distance is uh, if you take two fists together and place them in between your feet. That is right about at your frontal hip bones. And grab opposite elbows, bend into the knee so that you can rest your ribs right on top of your thighs. So this could look like, you know, like this. It could look like, it just depends on how open your hamstrings are. And just let your body, your upper body hang really heavy. Maybe you slowly straighten the legs any amount. Weight is in the toes so that you get your hips a little bit higher over the heels. And we're taking deep breaths here. <laughs> One more breath in through the nose and out. On your next inhale, we're going to start to rise, but we're only going to come up halfway. So take your, um, run your palms along your legs until you can get, find your spine at um, a totally, sorry, your back is totally flat and your spine is as straight as possible. So this could look like, you know, you could be up here if that's, um, if it's difficult for you, you could be all the way down to the floor. We just want to make sure that we're not curving the back like this, that we have as straight of a back as possible. Take your weight more into your toes and reach the crowd of your head forward. Take a big inhale breath through the nose and into this halfway lift. And exhale out. As you inhale, we're going to slight bend into the knees. We're going to keep that flat back as we rise all the way up to standing. Their arms next to our sides. Okay, so typically that um, 
in the beginning of a yoga class, you have spine twists and cat cows to just warm up the spine gently. You have a little bit of core work just to get the body a, a little bit warmed up. Um, and then typically a nice long downward dog, a nice long forward fold to get um, the sort of those um, juices flowing. So the one thing that I want to take some time on is called um, mountain pose. And that is what they call the blueprint pose of vinyasa yoga. And that is the sort of posture that we want to try to aim to find in every single pose that we're in. Um, so if you want to stand with your feet hips width distance apart, and again, that's two fists or where your, your second toe is right in line with your um, front hip bones. So those are the, the bony parts of your hips right here. I want you to start rocking around in circles on your feet just to feel the foundation of your feet and all four corners. Lift your toes up and then peel them down, starting with the pinky toe down to the um, big toe. And then grip the floor with your toes. Okay, so you have this nice stable foundation in your feet to start. Imagine there are roots growing down from your feet into the mat, holding you and supporting you. And then take a soft bend in the knees, but at the same time, see if you can pull your um, kneecaps up towards your thighs and that and that to in order to engage your quads. So that is difficult for a lot of us because it, like normally when we think of um, engaging our quads, we're locking out the knees. But see if you can engage your legs without locking out the knees. Take your tailbone. I'm going to turn this way. Check your, take your tailbone rather than um, dipping in the lumbar spine. Take your tailbone down towards your heels. Pull your front hip bones up towards um, your shoulders. And then take your arms next to your sides, pull your low belly in towards your spine, cinch your ribs together. So rather than letting them splay out like this, we want everything tucked in. Take your shoulder blades down towards your tailbone, create space between the shoulders and the ears, arms are at your side, and then your chin is parallel to the earth. So the goal here is to get our ears in line with our shoulders, shoulders in line with the hips, hips in line with the knees, knees in line with the heels. So we're in a fully straight mountain pose. In every sort of yoga posture, we want to try to find this alignment so that our, our joints are stacked on top of each other and we can um, engage each pose from a muscular level and not from sinking into the joints. Um, and it just helps keep us safe. It helps keep um, you know, our bodies in line and, and uh, you know, build up foundational muscles in our body. So when we're doing a pose like say side angle, I'm not crunching over like this. I'm trying to keep my spine long and straight. And that actually helps build these foundational core muscles all around here when I'm holding this pose like this, right? My knee is right over my ankle and I'm building foundational support and strength in my thighs by doing that. So whenever we're in this optimal alignment, we're building this foundational strength in our body to just in general, just live our lives, but also to practice yoga safely. So that being said, we will start in mountain pose and we'll go through um, sun salutation A. So that's sort of the flow that you know, that you've seen a lot um, and that you may be familiar with. But um, first, we'll get into that mountain pose. Go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale, reach your arms forward and up all the way up towards the ceiling with your, your palms facing one another. When you're in this um, first position, see if you can draw the shoulders away from the ears. Arms are pinned straight and palms are facing one another. So the arms are as engaged as you possibly can. And try to see if you can prevent the ribs from flaring out by, again, finding that mountain pose, taking the ribs together and belly towards the spine, tailbone down towards the earth. So we reach up high on the inhale breath. And then as we exhale, we're gonna bow forward either with our hands in prayer or you can swan dive down this way. It's totally up to you. So we're coming all the way down into a forward fold. In a forward fold, you can place your hands on your shins, you can place the fingertips on the mat, but we wanna to try to keep that knee, the knees slightly bent in this so that we are not totally locking off the hip or the knee joint here, right? So we're exhaling on the on the forward fold. 
And then as you inhale, we're coming into that halfway lift. So finding that flat back. So rising any amount so that you can find a flat back. And then as you exhale, we're going to fold forward, place our palms flat on the mat, shoulder width distance apart. And then we're going to step back into a high plank position. So you have two options here in, um, a, in your uh, sun salutation A. So you, if, you, if this is difficult for you to hold a high plank, lower the knees. And then you're going to lower all the way down to your belly. And I want you to keep your elbows pinned to the sides all the way down. So you're on your belly. Untuck your back toes. Take your elbows right next to your side. So pull your shoulder blades together and broaden up the collarbones before you even do anything. Press into the tops of the feet on the mat. Lift your kneecaps up so that your quads are engaged. Take your tailbone down towards your heels. Press the pubic bone into the mat. Does this sound familiar? It's, we're already getting into mountain pose here. So take an inhale breath through the nose. Exhale out. Inhale, slowly start to peel your chest and your shoulders off of the mat, keeping your neck straight. But I want you to use the strength of your back rather than pressing into your hands. So little to no weight in the hands here. This is low cobra, baby cobra, however you want to say it. And then as you exhale, we're going to release our forehead back to, to the mat. Press up into tabletop position. So if all is well, our hands are a little bit farther forward and our, hand, our palms are not directly under our shoulders. Tuck your toes under. Start to lift your hips and press back into downward facing dog. So that's one variation that you can move through um, if you find the high plank and chaturanga push-ups are too difficult for you. The other version in the sun salutation A is we hold high plank and then as we exhale, we're shifting our shoulders forward past our fingertips and then so we're right on the tops of our toes here. As we exhale, we're going to start to lower halfway, but we're going to keep our elbows. We're doing a tricep push-up, right? So it, not like a normal push-up where our elbows are out. We're trying to do these chest dips, right? So we're in a tricep push-up where our elbows are pinned to our sides and our shoulders are right in line with our elbows. So never let your shoulders dip below your elbows when you're in a chaturanga push-up. Untuck the back toes, start to peel your chest forward and find upward facing dog. The knees are lifted, toes are uh, pressing into the mat with our pinky side edge of the toes pulling down into the mat and you're lifting from the inner thighs. Take a deep breath in through the nose. As you exhale, you're going to engage the core, press into the palms to take your hips high and then untuck your toes on the way up. Take an inhale breath through the nose and downward dog and an exhale out. So you may, so that's two options for the flow, but um, what I want to address really quick is something that you may see people do a lot where they're in a high plank and they dip low and come into an upward dog like this. The problem with doing that is, is um, doing it repetitively. So doing it once or twice is not a big deal. But what that does is it like it pinches your shoulder joint and like engages and it's like you're not when your joints aren't stacked with one another, that can, that repetitive sort of motion that like isn't you're you're sinking into the joints and sinking into the ligaments um the repetitiveness of that will over time wear down those ligaments and like and uh it may increase injury later on so you just want to be able to avoid that by shifting forward and lowering down halfway rather than this dipping movement because that over time may start to rub those that shoulder joint the wrong way so um if you want to safely practice and be able to build a foundational strength See if you can do lower, uh, shifting forward and then lowering halfway first. And that allows everything to sort of flow without risk of injury. So we're meeting in downward facing dog. So hands come forward, hips are high, heels are sinking down towards the mat. Take an inhale breath through the nose. And then as you exhale, we're gonna walk our feet forward to the front of our mat to meet our hands. On your inhale breath, you're going to rise into that halfway lift, find a flat back. And then as you exhale, we're folding all the way down. On your next inhale, we're going to um, have a soft bend at the knees and flat back as we rise all the way up to standing. You can reverse swan dive or reach the arms forward. 
all the way up to standing, arms overhead. And then as you exhale, hands come to your heart for prayer. So that's Sun Salutation A, two variations of that. I encourage you to practice whatever way you feel comfortable with. Um, don't push it super far, but definitely challenge yourself, right? So um, know your limits and know, uh, you know, if something is feeling really, really hard, then modify as you need and take it a little bit easier. But um, if you feel like you can challenge yourself and go for that full, you know, the full tricep push up, then um, I, I invite you to do that. So, but it's totally, it's your practice. You do, you do you. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to move through that two more times, and then we'll go through Sun Salutation B. On your inhale breath, reach your arms up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, we're folding all the way down. Inhale, come up into that halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back into high plank position, and you can even lower the knees and go down into the baby cobra, or shift your shoulders forward, lower halfway down, chaturanga push-up. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out. Inhale two. And then exhale out. Last breath, inhale. As you exhale, come up onto your tippy toes, bend into the knees and sit your hips back towards your heels and look forward. So you can either just walk up towards the front, or if you want to try to hop up, um, at, your, at the end of your exhale breath, pop your feet forward to the front of your mat. So that's, again, just another option for you. Take an inhale up and come up into that halfway lift. And on your exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees with a flat back, rise all the way up to standing. Arms come up overhead. And then exhale, hands come through center in prayer in front of your heart. One more time, inhale through the nose, arms come up overhead. Exhale, bow forward all the way down. Inhale, rise, halfway lift. And then exhale, plant your hands on the mat, step your legs back, high lunge, I'm sorry, high plank, or lower the knees, lower down to your belly and tuck the back toes. Inhale, low cobra or upward. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling out. Inhale two and exhale out. Inhale three and then exhale. Come up onto your tippy toes, sit your hips back, bend into the knees, look forward, and then maybe hop or step or jump up. Inhale, come up halfway and then exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, rise to standing, sweeping the arms up overhead. And then exhale, hands come through prayer in front of your heart. Okay, so that's Sun Salutation A, and we'll go on to Sun Salutation B. So the first part of B is chair pose. So sit your hips down low like you're sitting into a chair. Arms sweep forward in front of us. You have two options in chair. You could either take your feet uh, so that your toes are touching and your heels are slightly apart, or your feet are hips with distance apart. So this is just based off of your body anatomically, like what feels good. Um, sometimes people with knee problems like the straight legs better, but it's totally up to you. And then we're sitting our hips low, arms are forward. So this is a, um, difficult for a lot of us for shoulders. So if our shoulders are really tight, take your arms wide like a V, right? So the, Closer we have them together, the, the harder that that is. So take them a little bit wider if you're finding that you're having some trouble reaching them forward. So in chair pose, same concepts apply, right? So we want to, rather than dipping into the lumbar spine, take your tailbone down towards your heels, pull your belly towards your spine, cinch your ribs together, and then arms come forward. Weight is in the heels, so much weight in fact, that you can actually lift your toes and wiggle them off of the mat. If you have your toes together, you can even squeeze your thighs together, and everyone can squeeze their glutes together. So again, we're building that foundational strength. Take an inhale breath in chair pose, and then as you exhale, we're going to fold forward, straighten the legs. Then your inhale breath, come up into that halfway lift. This is familiar. 
And then exhale, plant your hands, step back into high plank. You can lower the knees moving through little cobra or lowering halfway, inhaling upward facing, exhaling downward facing dog. Okay, on your inhale breath, we're gonna step your right foot forward to meet your right hand. So we're in sort of in this little lunge. Take your stance, your feet a little bit wider to start. Drop your left heel down so that your left foot is at, a, at an angle. And then you're gonna to start to reach your collarbones and your chest forward. Pull your low belly towards your spine. Press into the big toe mound of your right foot and start to reach your arms forward, rising all the way up. So this is warrior one. So the goal with warrior one is to try to get our hips square to the front of the mat, all while keeping nice bend in the front knee and planting the outer edge of our left foot into the mat. So try to see if you can distribute your weight in the front heel and the back outer arch. Drop your right hip down and then take your left hip forward. Pull your belly in towards your spine, cinch your ribs together. And then arms come up overhead. So our shoulders and our hips are trying to face the front of the, ma of the mat. And we have a wider stance to start. Typically this pose is taught with heel to heel alignment, but I find that that's really difficult for many people with um, hip, uh, just like less hip mobility. And I feel like I've been practicing yoga for four years and I still don't have the hip mobility to do heel to heel alignment. So that's why I like to teach with a, wider stance and you can sort of narrow the stance at your own will. So we're in warrior one, take an inhale breath, take your shoulders down your back so that you have plenty of space between your ears and your shoulders. And then as you exhale, the same way that you came, you're gonna to start to reach your arms forward and then plant your hands on the mat, step your right foot back to meet the left and then we're moving through that flow, that vinyasa flow. So lowering halfway or all the way down to her belly, inhaling upward or low cobra, Exhaling into downward facing dog. Take an inhale breath. And an exhale out. Inhale, step your left foot forward to meet your left hand. And again, we're setting up for warrior one. So wide in the stance, any amount. Drop your right heel down so that your right foot is at a 45 degree angle. And then we're going to bend into that front knee so that our knee is right over our ankle, right? We're going to pull our belly towards our spine engage the left glute, press firmly into the left big toe mound, start to reach your arms forward and rise all the way up. Okay, so we wanna see if we can square the hips towards the front of the room, right? So take your left hip and drop it down a little bit further, take your right hip forward. So notice what I did, notice what happened when I did that, my, my knee came back, right? So. The goal is to try to keep that knee right over the ankle while you square your hips to the front of the room. Press into the outer edge of your right foot to that back leg. Make sure that the knee is pointed in the same direction as your second toe on the right, left foot, excuse me. Arms come up overhead, draw your shoulders away from your ears, pull your belly towards your spine, draw your ribs together. Take an inhale breath and then exhale out. This is warrior one. Inhale through the nose. And then as you exhale, we're gonna to start to reach forward the same way that we came. Plant your hands on the mat, release that back heel, step back into a high lunge position and then move through your variation. Or just skip it and go straight to downward facing dog. It's totally up to you. Okay, so we're gonna take three deep breaths here. And then we're going to eventually make our way back to chair. So take an inhale breath and then exhale out. Inhale, press into the hands and then exhale out, get longer in the spine. Inhale, breath through the nose. Come up onto your tippy toes as you exhale, bend into the knees, look forward, step or jump or hop up towards the front of your mat. On your inhale breath, come into that halfway lift. And then as you exhale, we're folding down. Inhale back into chair pose. So sit your hips low. So I'd like to start bent over here. I can sit my hips low first, shift the weight into my heels, pull my belly off of my thighs, and then reach my arms forward. 
chair pose. Inhale through the nose. And then exhale, stand straight all the way back up. Samastitihi, mountain pose. Okay, so that is one full round of sun salutation. Be able to do that two more times. Inhale, chair pose. Sit your hips low. Pull your belly towards your spine. Take your tailbone down towards your heels. Take an inhale breath. And then exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, plant your hands on the mat. Step back into high plank and move through your variation. Lowering. Inhaling into your back bend. And exhaling to downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot forward to meet the right palm. Drop the left to heel down, set up for warrior one and rise. See if you can square the hips towards the front of the room, pressure into the outer edge of your left foot, right knee tracking right over the right ankle. Pull your belly towards your spine, shoulder blades down the back, inhale breath. Exhale, reach the arms forward, plant them on the mat, release that back heel, step back into high plank, and then move through your variation. Inhaling into your back bend, exhaling into downward facing dog. Inhale, step your left foot forward, drop your right heel, find that angle with your right foot and start to rise for warrior one. Squaring the hips at any amount. Shoulder blades are coming off or coming down the back, create space between the ears and the shoulders. Pin straight arms, one more breath here. And then exhale, start to reach forward, bending the hands on the mat, to release the back heel. Step back, high plank, lowering, inhaling, upward facing or low cobra, exhaling, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here through the nose, inhaling and exhaling out. Inhale through the nose, exhale out. Last breath in, come up under your tippy toes. And then as you exhale, bend into the knees, look forward, step or hop or float up towards the front of your mat. Inhale, come into that halfway lift. And then exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, sit in the chair pose. Arms come forward. And then exhale, rise to standing. We'll do that one more time. I'm sweating, I don't know about you guys. Inhale, sit your hips low, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, plant your hands on the mat, sit back, high plank. Lowering halfway or all the way down. On your inhale, find your back bend. On your exhale, find downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot forward. Drop the left heel. Rise, warrior one, squaring the hips and the amount. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, start to reach forward, plant the hands on the mat, release the heel, step back, high plank, lowering all the way or halfway. Inhale upward or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing. Inhale, step your left foot forward, drop your right heel down, rise for warrior one, squaring the hips and the amount. Inhale through the nose. And then as you exhale, start to reach your arms forward, planting your hands on the mat, releasing the right heel. Step back, high plank, lowering. Inhale upward or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths, inhaling through the nose and breathing out the nose. Breath in and breath out. One more breath. Come under the tippy toes, bend the knees, look forward, step or hop or jump up towards the front of your mat. Inhale, come up halfway. And then exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, sit your hips low, chair pose last time. And then straighten your legs, rise on your exhale breath. Okay, so that's some salutation B. That's another pretty common one that we do in a vinyasa class. We're gonna to start to pull things down a little bit. Um, so I want you to grab, yeah, so grab a pillow 
or if you have a yoga block, a yoga block works too. But we're gonna take, we're gonna come to it with our backs facing the wall. We're gonna take a pillow in our hand and see if you can find a pillow that you can hold that's that shoulder width distance apart. So this block for me, the long ways is shoulder width distance, right? So it's right, my shoulder is essentially right where my hands are, right? So um, we're gonna come flat to a wall. So find a flat wall with nothing, no pictures or anything. And you're gonna come to stand with your heels flush with the wall. And then see if you can take your tailbone towards the wall, your calves to the wall without locking your knees out. So you might not be able to take your calves to the wall without locking your knees. If you can't touch your calves to the wall without locking your knees, don't worry about the calves. I'm just saying. Um, okay, so then see if you can take your shoulder blades to the wall. So right now, my heels, my glutes, and my shoulders, shoulder blades, are touching the wall. Start to reach your arms forward with the pillow or whatever you have in your hands. Keep your arms as straight as possible. Squeeze the pillow as much as you can. So this should be relatively challenging for most people. Take a deep inhale breath through the nose. See if you can pull your belly in towards your spine and cinch your ribs together. Start to raise the block, maybe at a 45 degree angle. Taking the shoulder blades again back towards the wall. Inhaling through the nose. And exhaling out. Are your shoulder blades still against the wall? See if you can raise the block a little bit higher. Pull your belly in. Ribs are drawing together. And then if you can, take the block or the pillow all the way back towards the wall. Squeeze the block or the pillow as much as you can. So I want everything, I want the block, I want the shoulder blades, the tailbone and your heels to be all against the wall. If they are not, just work in that direction. And we're holding here for three more breaths, inhaling through the nose. If your calves aren't firing up, I don't, they should be, your calves should be firing up. One more breath through the nose. And then exhale, release. Walk away from the wall. You can just shake it out any amount. Okay. Um, then we are going to come into, a, yes, we're going to come into a camel pose at the wall. Okay. So imagine there is a wall right in front of me. I want you to take a pillow or a block, place it in between your thighs. And squeeze uh, the block as much as you can with your thighs. So our the tops of our feet are flat on the mat, so no tucking of the toes. Squeeze the block as much as you possibly can. Grab another pillow. And every time I say block, if you have a pillow, just know that I mean pillow. But squeeze the pillow with your thighs and take another pillow in your arms. So you should be, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mention this part. You should be flush with the wall right now. So you should be, imagine that this is a wall. I want you to take your knees all the way to the wall. You may need to, also sorry, you may need to place a blanket underneath your knees if this is uncomfortable um, on your knees. I want you to take your knees all the way to the wall Press your pubic bone into the wall. And then we're going to take our, yeah, take our pillow and place it over our arms or in our in our hands overhead and see if we can press into the wall any amount. So imagine I have a wall right here. And I just want you to think about pressing into the tops of the feet pressing into the shins on the floor. Press your pubic bone into the wall. Pull your belly towards your spine. Draw the shoulder blades down the back. And now I want you to see if you can reach the block up the wall and start to lift like somebody has a string attached to your sternum. Start to lift and pull your chest up towards the ceiling all while maintaining 
pubic bone against the wall, thighs towards the wall, knees towards the wall, belly towards the spine. So lift your chest up towards the ceiling. See if you can maybe tip your chin up towards the ceiling. Take one more deep breath in through the nose. And then exhale, release. Release the pillows out of the way. Okay, last thing that we're gonna do is a little bit more shoulder opening. So come to standing at a wall. And I want you to place your hand. So let's see, this plant is in the way. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna place my hand on the wall. You can't really see it. My fingertips are facing up. And then I'm gonna walk so that my, sh my wrist is directly in line. I'm gonna face this way. So imagine there's a wall here. My wrist is directly in line with our shoulder and my arm is pinned straight. And I wanna, I'm gonna press into the wall as much as I can. So this is the wall. I'm gonna see if I can do this way. You can probably see it, yeah, perfect, okay. So I'm gonna press into the wall as much as I can and see if I can get, um, and I'm, in, I'm in mountain pose right now, right? So you should start to feel this in the palm, in the inner elbow, the inner forearm, basically the entire inner arm. So press into the wall as much as you can so that your arm is pinned straight. And then just sit with that tingling sensation. So breathe through that. It's, oh, it's temporary. And if anything, it kind of feels kind of weirdly good. You should feel this really deeply right into the front shoulder that where that connects to your pectoral. You definitely feel it there as well. So take one more deep breath through the nose and exhale out. Okay, so now I want you to flip your hand so that your fingertips are facing behind you. So your wrist should be facing forward. So it kind of looks like this. I want you to flip the palm so that the fingertips are facing back. And this is a little bit more, this is gonna be a little bit more intense. If you're feeling like your shoulder is pretty open and you can take it a little bit farther, you know, start to turn away from the wall this way. So turn your body away from the wall. This may be enough for you and that's great. I was at, at one point I was at this, this was, I was screaming at this point. So if this is, you're feeling a lot of tingling here, tingling in your hand, the inner uh, arm and your shoulder, stay here. If you want to go a little bit further, you can start to turn your body away. So this is a really deep shoulder opener here. And we're breathing deeply in through the nose and out. One more breath in through the nose and then start to slowly turn if you have turned out and then just release. And then let's come onto the other side. So place the palm, fingertips facing up this time, flat against the wall. And we'll take five deep breaths here in through the nose. Maybe just will shake out that right arm a little bit. That's totally okay. And exhaling out, inhaling through the nose, and exhaling out. If you're ready, and you want to turn the palms so that your fingertips are facing behind you, now's a good time. So again, I want the wrist right in line with the shoulder. Your arm is pinned straight, so you can see. And if you want to turn away from the wall any amount, to open up that shoulder. You should feel really feel this in the palm, in the inner arm, all running up and down the arm, and especially in your inner or your front shoulder and pectoral. See if you can keep your elbow as straight as possible. Take one more deep breath in through the nose. And then exhale slowly, start to release, shake out that arm. The final thing that we're going to do, we're going to come to the wall one more time. And we're going to start to, we're going to place our arms on the wall in front of us. So up, up above us, any amount. And then we're going to start to walk and slide our hands back so that we're sort of in this weird angle, angular position. 
And take your hands um, wider than shoulder width distance apart to start. And then we're going to start to um, reach our tailbone backwards so that we can sink our chest. <laughs> we're going to sink our chest. Keep sinking, everyone. <laughs> sink your chest down towards the floor in between um, your shoulders, right? In between your arms. So this is a, another nice deep shoulder opener. Take one deep breath here. And then as you exhale, we're slowly going to start to rise. Pull your belly towards your spine. Curve your back. And then look up. And then just push away from the wall. Okay, so a lot of yoga requires some pretty open shoulders. So always want to give you guys some time to stretch that out. Okay, so we're going to come into seated with our legs uh, straight out in front of us. And then on your inhale breath, start to reach your arms up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, just fold forward, bend into the knees, and just let your body hang over. And like, don't think about trying to stretch the hamstrings. Just let this be a super passive fold and just let your body relax. I have my knees bent here pretty deeply. My back is curved. I'm just letting, letting this hang super heavy. And I'm just resting here for a moment and letting my shoulders relax. Deep breaths in and out through the nose here. On your next inhale breath, slowly start to rise up. Bend your knees and place the soles of your feet flat on the mat. Take your arms forward. We're going to slowly, very, very, very slowly curl down all the way down to our back. Slow and with control. Try to keep your feet flat on the mat. And then release. Draw your knees into your chest. Start to make circles with the knees to massage the sacrum and the low back. Reverse the direction of the circles. And then take your knees towards your armpits. See if you can grab the outer edges of your feet, flex your feet, and pull your heels in towards your shoulders. And then start to take your heels up towards the ceiling. So we have the outer edges of our feet, feet are flexed. Then take your knees even further into your armpits, out to your sides. Your arms, your upper, your like biceps are sort of like, um, like uh, coddling your um, knees in a way, like they're um, coddling them in a way. See if you can take your tailbone down towards the mat. So right now my tailbone is sort of tipped up. I'm gonna sort of try to press my tailbone into the mat to lengthen the spine. And this is happy baby pose. So now you can rock side to side. This should feel pretty good on the low back. Should feel like a pretty nice stretch in the in the hips. And we'll take another deep breath here. My, my knee. <laughs> and then release the grip of the feet. Take your knees together in front of your chest, and then make a couple more circles to massage the sacrum. Take your arms out wide like a T, and then start to drop your knees over to, to the left for a supine twist. If your right shoulder comes off of the mat in this twist, place a pillow underneath your knees. Find a couple deep breaths here. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, take your knees back to center and drop them over to the right. And then if you need that pillow on the other side so that your left shoulder stays on the mat, place it underneath your knees. Honey. Honey. Okay. Take one more deep breath in through the nose. And then as you exhale, draw your knees back into center into your chest. Wrap your arms around your knees. Take your forehead towards your knees and just give yourself a nice squeeze. 
Take one more long breath in through the nose. Feeling the belly press into the thighs. And then as you exhale, take your legs straight out in front of you. Rest your head down. Take your shoulders um, and your arms down by your sides with your palms facing up. Press into the back of your head to lift your shoulder blades off of the mat and pull them together underneath you and then rest them down. And the same thing with your heels. Press into the heels to lift your tailbone off of the mat and then tuck it underneath you towards your heels so that you can sink a little bit lower in that lumbar spine. And then go ahead and close the eyes and let go of any breath control that you have. This is our final resting pose, Kavasana, the best part of yoga. And take this time to scan your body and notice if there is anywhere that you're holding on tension, if you are gripping anywhere. And just release that tension. It could be in the hands, in the shoulders, it could be in the feet, it could be in the jaw. So if your jaw is clenched, just let it go. Unfurrow the brow. Left lips are slightly parted and the tongue is removed from the roof of your mouth and resting in the back of your throat. I encourage you to stay here as long as you want, maybe five minutes or so. And just relax and have this moment of peace and gratitude and calmness. Soothe your body and prepare you for a night, good night's sleep. And as a rewind or an unwind from your day. And again, just stay here as long as you need. I'm going to just mute the video. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.